call the Assistant Minister. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Well, I have spoken uh, in this place many times about the need for us to hold ourselves accountable and to indeed set the standard. Uh, and so I do um, want to once again take the opportunity to acknowledge the critical work of the former Sex Discrimination Commissioner Kate Jenkins uh, and her team at the Australian Human Rights Commission in helping to set us on this course. Uh, I also want to acknowledge all the staff in this place, the current and former staff who contributed their experiences to that report. I know that was not easy for many of those staff, but we are a better parliament because of your efforts, so thank you. I want to acknowledge uh, the people in this place who have helped steer us to this point, because again, let's be honest, this isn't a workplace that embraces change easily. Uh, it is not a workplace that has done this really difficult work in the past. It, is, it has taken us far too long to get to this point. Uh, and I want to acknowledge the people who, in the just two years of our government being in power, have now got us to the point where we are introducing something that probably should have happened a very long time ago. So in particular, I pay tribute uh, to my friend and colleague, the member for Newcastle, for her leadership, mm -hmm. and of course, to the Minister for Women, Katie Gallagher. Uh, Deputy Speaker, Labor, both in opposition and now in government, have been steadfast in our commitment to making this a safer workplace for all people. This is something that we need to see action on. For too long, this parliament hasn't met the standards the Australian people expect of us. Uh, and in fact, we're the place that sets the standards and rules for other workplaces, and yet we haven't managed to meet uh, the standards that we have expected of those in the Australian community. And that is, that is shameful for all of us. And it is something that collectively uh, we must continue to set right. Uh, in particular, it is very concerning that this parliament has, in too many cases, not been a safe workplace for women. Uh, it is positive that that is changing, but uh, we would be kidding ourselves if we thought it was job done. Uh, this is a really important part of the puzzle, but it is still on all of us in this place, particularly those of us elected uh, to this place, particularly those of us who employ staff in this place, to make sure that we are doing everything we can, uh, everything that we have a responsibility for, to make this a safer workplace for all and particularly for women. The Set the Standard report found that the experience of so many staffers and others who work in parliament or other workplace, uh, parliamentary workplaces um, their experiences were of a workplace that was often toxic and harmful. Uh, so it's been absolutely clear for some time that Parliament needed to improve, uh, that we do need that long-term cultural piece of change in how our Parliament workplace operates. The recommendations that were put forward in the Setting the Standard report have helped us to ensure that we are on the pathway to make sure that this workplace, our electorate officers, uh, and related workplaces are safe and respectful. Uh, they do put us in the area where we are now following best practice in preventing and responding to bullying, sexual harassment and sexual assault. The delivery uh, of, of all of that work, as I said, is on all of us, government members, opposition members, crossbench members. We all have a responsibility uh, to deliver on making this a safe workplace. Uh, to ensure this building, Commonwealth parliamentary workplaces here and around the country are safe and respectful. Uh, and in particular, I think what is important about the architecture of the IPSC that we set up through this bill is that it ensures that there are consequences for actions. That we know uh, that if we are not behaving in a way where staff feel safe, where they are respected, where we are doing the work to make this a workplace uh, where that is the norm, that we will be held accountable uh, for our actions. For too long, there has been impunity in this place. There has been a sense uh, that being an elected member of parliament in somehow, in some way, put you above consequences or rules that applied to people who worked in other workplaces. That is no longer the case. With the Independent Parliamentary Standards Commission, we do have in this place a mechanism to see uh, the outcomes that will hold people accountable for their actions. Since the Set the Standard report was first handed down, uh, our government has been committed to implementing all 28 of its recommendations. We are very clear that parliamentary workplaces should be safe and respectful for everyone. Uh, and it's work that we have done uh, and, and tried to do by bringing the whole parliament together. 
So last year, the government, working with the Parliamentary Leadership Task Force and its staff consultation group, established the statutory Parliamentary Workplace Support Service. Uh, the PWS, uh, PWSS has since uh, enhanced its operations, uh, providing centralised human resources support to parliamentarians and their staff. And I think, again, uh, if you talk to people in many other professional workplaces around Australia, they would be astounded uh, to hear that it took us until 2023 to really have in place uh, a centralised professional uh, HR service for this building, but that is in fact the case. Uh, and I know uh, certainly from my experience, from the experience of my staff and from the experiences of others I've spoken to, that having the PWSS in place has made a difference to their experience in this building. Uh, the PWSS does provide services to a broader cohort of people who work in the parliament to support a safe and respectful workplace. Uh, and so that is a really important part of, of part of that architecture that we needed to set up to make this a safer workplace. What we are doing now with this bill is the next part, the establishment of the Independent Parliamentary Standards Commission. So the IPSC will be able to investigate complaints about breaches of behaviour codes uh, that will apply in the parliamentary workplace. Uh, and in fact, having the IPSC in place means that having those codes, those behaviour codes that we have all signed up to, can finally commence. Uh, importantly, the IPSC will have fair and confidential processes. Uh, and again, uh, that is important. I acknowledge all of the staff, uh, again, who as part of this process have brought forward their stories and their experiences. It is vital uh, that as part of these mechanisms we are putting in place now, staff feel like they have avenues uh, to take complaints and to take issues to that they feel are safe and respectful. And that is how the IPSC is being set up. It will be independent and it will be impartial. Uh, and the government has really worked very closely with parliamentary, parliamentarians through the Parliamentary Leadership Task Force, uh, with staff in the building uh, and other people right across the parliament to get these important reforms right. We do have to make sure that when serious workplace issues arise in this place, people have recourse through an independent investigation uh, and that there is real accountability for people doing the wrong thing. That accountability that has been lacking in the past uh, and that I think has been a factor in making people both feel unsafe and also feel like they do not have genuine avenues to take complaints or concerns through. Uh, in doing all of this work, we've sought as much as possible to align with the approach and the recommendations of the Set the Standard report, while also really balancing that against the need for this legislation to carefully interact with the role of the parliament. Uh, and so in striking this balance, we've uh, worked out that the IPSC would be established as part of the PWSS, uh, and there will be functional separation between the IPSC's investigation function and the PWSS's functions. Uh, so they'll work together in complementary ways. Uh, the PWSS will continue to be a front door for complainants, uh, although a complaint could be made directly to the IPSC. Uh, and the IPSC will not commence investigations that would be better addressed through the PWSS's complaint resolution function. Uh, so again, we have tried to be very thoughtful about how both of these bodies are providing uh, people who, in this workplace with avenues to have issues addressed, uh, and then at the end point, uh, where necessary, there are also consequences uh, for findings uh, against people. And, and as I said, those consequences will be an important part uh, of the, the architecture that we're setting up. Deputy Speaker, as an imp independent and impartial body, the IPSC will be well placed to undertake investigations and to determine whether misconduct has occurred. Uh, the IPSC would be able to directly impose sanctions on MPs, including training, behaviour agreements and reprimands, and will refer serious findings to the relevant Privileges Committee to recommend appropriate sanctions to the Parliament. The relevant Privileges Committee would then be responsible for considering the appropriate sanction and would be required to report to the Parliament with their recommendation. Importantly, this would require a public report uh, ensuring that the committee is accountable for their recommendation to the parliament. And accountability, again, is part of what has been missing. Uh, and again, in talking uh, with many people over the years that this process um, has been active in this parliament, 
I know from many conversations uh, with broader members of the public, but particularly when talking to young women about how they view this place as a workplace, uh, that they have really seen it as a consequence-free environment. Uh, and obviously the concern for all of us in here is not just the concern that we should all hold that uh, the Australian public aren't very impressed sometimes with how we conduct ourselves and how we uh, treat this place as a workplace, um, but also that the message we are sending to young women uh, is one that they're receiving of this not being a safe place for them to either want to work uh, in or to enter as an MP. And that is something that is, it is on all of us uh, to actively work to change. Passage of this legislation will help finalise the implementation of the recommendations from the Set the Standard report, <coughs> helping to ensure that this workplace leads by example and is safer for all, for parliamentarians, for staff, uh, all of those in the building. I absolutely acknowledge that Parliament House is a unique workplace. And in that uniqueness, we want to attract the best and the brightest here. Uh, we don't want to be exclusive about it. We don't want to be saying, uh, you can only come if you can hack it. You can only come if you can work out our unique, our unique workplace to your advantage. Uh, we want to say this is a safe and respectful workplace for all people. And this is an important part of <coughs> sending that message both to the Australian people and also to all of those who work in this building. We have a shared responsibility to make sure that people who work in this building and in other political offices are able to do their job in a safe way and that they are confident that the systems and supports uh, that should be in place to support them are there when and if they need them. Uh, we have taken the time to get this legislation right and, and as I said, to consult across the parliament uh, and I do uh, thank all the people, uh, not just in the government, but in the other parties and the opposition who have been involved uh, in that consultation. I am sure um, that as a result of this legislation, we will get uh, a better parliament. We will get a parliament that is more respectful. Uh, we will get a parliament that is safer for staff and people who work in this environment. We will place this parliament uh, in line with the standards that we, we uh, request of other workplaces right around the country. Uh, change like this doesn't happen overnight. Uh, I'm not kidding myself that we have done all the work we need to do. And I say again that the responsibility is on all of us, particularly those of us who are elected members of this place, to make sure that we live up to setting the standard, uh, to make sure that we don't think this is a set and forget uh, and work is done, uh, but that we continue uh, to work together to set the standard to make sure that people are safe and respected in this workplace.